And welcome back to Pike County Central, Ken, as we're about ready to get started with second half or second game action. We had an extended period between games as one of the backboards was shattered in warm up. That's just a precursor to what's going on here tonight. All right, right. A long, long delay here, but uh uh, the gym is packed on both sides. Uh, great anticipation of this game as these two teams met earlier in the season twice. Uh, both games right to the wire. Pike Central winners of both. But uh, this is going to be a great matchup. Well, you know, that's true, Ken. They played well all season long, both teams have. And they've had two previous matchups that have gone down to the wire. I don't expect this to be any different. Right. And here comes the warning for the debris being thrown on the floor, which uh, will, it, will result in a technical for your team. And it looks like we're about ready for player introductions here. Just as soon as he gets done with all the warnings, as this is a large crowd for a district tournament game. Yes, it is. You know, Pike Central, a big gym, and it's it, the bottom of the lower arena is completely full and about half of the upper arena is filled, so we've got a big crowd here. Huge crowd. And now we're going to do the starting lineup. Mike will be the visitors on the, on the scoreboard, and you want to give us a starting lineup? Uh, as they're up. getting ready to introduce the lineup. Chase Gibson starting for the Panthers. Matt Branham. Adam Myers at guard. Matt Corbin will start at center. Paul Howard at the other guard. And now, now the Pike County Central Hawks, Charlie. As Pike Central is getting a tunnel out onto the floor, <laughs> the crowd really getting into it, as you'll be able to hear us over them. And I'll tell you, this crowd is really fired up. Dude. Yes, they are, on both sides of the gym. Yes, sir. And we're about ready for the starting lineup, if we can see them get out of there. And <laughs> starting. Jason Gillespie, number 12, will start at one forward. If he could get through this tunnel, he'd be bald out there. <laughs> Kristen Davis, a senior, number 34, will start at the other forward. Number 14, Michael Gillespie, will start at the point guard tonight. Number 24, John Scott, will start at the two guard. The center will come out will be number 33, Chris Clevenger. And looks like the top center looks like they're fired up and ready for action. Yes, they've got a bunch of students out there. They are fired up. And Pike will come out ready to play and wait for final instructions from Coach Dave Thomas for the Hawks. And we'll be ready to go here as he's got his charges around him over on the sideline. And we're just about ready for action. We keep saying that, but they keep waiting over in that huddle getting their final instructions. And uh, you're talking about this crowd. What a tremendous crowd. The, uh, you didn't mention the student sections underneath each goal. There's several hundred seats on each yep. end, and both of those are packed, both yes. the Pikeville and the Pike Central and end. Rabid fans on both ends, too. As we're about ready for tip-off, it'll be Chase Gibson and Chris Clevenger jumping up the center ball. And final instructions coming from the officials, and we're ready to play ball here. The ball hit, controlled by Pikeman. Myers has it to fight with that at the top of the key, starting at midcourt now. He's backed up to the center circle. And Pikeman running a set offense. Washburn tried to get the ball down into the hands of Chase Gibson early. Matt Branham has it over on the left side. Branham looking inside, takes it down low, gets to Myers. Myers puts up the three from the left corner. It's good. Pikeman on top, three to nothing. And we have a tech. The debris comes all over the floor from the both sides of the field. And we'll have a, I'm sure we're going to have a technical foul here somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe one on each team. I don't know. It's, uh, it's been an interesting call here by the officials as they've made the warning before and they've not called it. Let's see if they'll go ahead and call it tonight. 
as the Pikeville Panthers throw the toilet paper on the floor after the first basket and the Pike Central students retaliate with the little mini balls. Yep. And I tell you, we've got pandemonium breaks out, I guess. How's that for a big one? And uh, good start for the Panthers as Adam Myers buries the three from the left corner. A double technical foul has been assessed. Uh, does that mean we'll shoot two at each end, or will they just cancel it? Is it an offsetting penalty? Should be an offsetting penalty, my guess would be, but uh, this is not a call you see every day in the game. And the officials are just now discussing on what to do. I don't know if they'll jump it back up or the ball will go through the alternating possession back to Pike County Central. Let's see, they're discussing that with the scorer's table. The officials are trying to decide what to do here. All the official scorers are at the desk, and both coaches coming up. And we're in a quandary. And what an atmosphere for high school this, basketball. This is what it's all about, Ken Hall. I've been to Rupp Arena. I've been, we've been all over the country. And you know, the high school basketball fans are maybe the most rabid in the nation. They probably are. Great. This is a big game. The winner will advance not only to the championship game Thursday night, but will automatically be in the regional tournament next week at Shelby Valley. Uh, the loser will uh, call it a season. And yes. both these teams are loaded, uh, loaded with seniors. Right. Uh, Pike Central comes in here with uh, Chris Clevens as a senior, Tristan Davis, Scott Hensley, Sean Scott, and Justin Weddington. And uh, Pike boy, uh, pretty much their entire starting lineup is seniors. I know Chase, Chase Gibson, Matt Branham, Adam Myers, uh, Corey Russell, and uh, Matt Corbin, I believe, is senior. There. Uh, and Pike Central will have the ball on the alternating possession. Kristen Davis has it, gets up to Gillespie. Gillespie gets it down to Sean Scott. Scott tries to take it inside, stolen away by Chase Gibson. First turn over the ball game. Gibson brings it across court, gets it over to. Howard Gibson puts it up from the free throw line. It's good. Pike up five to nothing. Now 7.23 to go in the first quarter. Davis is coming up against Pike. Pike with pressure. Gets it up to Gillespie. Back to Scott. Scott double teamed over there. Puts the dribble down. Gets it across court to Boyd. Boyd drives into the lane. Kicks it down low to Clevenger. He loses it out of bounds. It'll go back to Pike. So Pike with pressure having an effect on Pike Central so far. Yes, it is. As Boyd led him too much on the pass. They try to get it inside to Gibson. He has it. He puts it up. It's blocked in there. And Clevenger. away with the rebound. A strong rebound in there by Chris Clevenger. Clevenger with the block of the Gibson shot. And Michael Boyd gets fouled. A blocking call will come down on Paul Howard. It'll be the first foul of the ball game. It'll be... First on Paul Howard, first on the Pikeville Panthers, and Pike Central will take it out underneath the, their own basket in front of the Pikeville fans. Sean Scott gets it in to Kristen Davis. Kristen Davis puts it up and in. Five to two now. Pike Central scores to get back into the ballgame. Adam Myers walking up to Pike. Brings it across the timeline. He sits up out in midcourt. Gets it down to Howard. Howard looking inside. Gets it across. Stole away by Sean Scott. Scott takes it all the way. He'll place it up on the other end. Five to four now, Pike Central. This is the kind of ball game we expected, Ken. Adam Myers will walk it up now for Pike to Pike. Six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Myers takes it over to the right side. Gets his peak. Tries to take down in the center. Lays it up. Rolls in. It's seven to four. Six seventeen to go. Sean Scott has it at midcourt for Pike Central. He comes across. He's hit by Corbin. Ball stolen away. Knocked out of bounds off of Paul Howard. Yeah, both teams really getting after it out I'll here. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a physical affair, and the officials are letting them play so far. But Boyd has it top of the key for Pike Central. Looking inside, trying to set up his play. Gets it across to Gillespie. Gillespie looks down low to Clevenger in the right corner. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd thought about the three. Takes it. Takes it over to the left. Brings it back to the right to Gillespie. Gillespie gets it down to Chris Clevenger on the right corner. Cross court pass to Scott. Scott puts up a long three. It's good. Pike Central ties it up. Save it all with 540 to go in the first quarter. Adam Myers brings it down. Chase Gibson thought about the three. Drives, puts it up. No good. And a blocking foul in there on uh, Michael Boyd. And Boyd picks up his first foul. That's the uh, first foul of the game for Pike Central. That'll see Chase Gibson to the line to shoot two. 
We're all tied, seven up. Five and a half minutes to go. Got up and good. Gibson will have one more. Gives five with a one point lead, eight to seven. Gibson has the basket, puts up the second. It's short. Rebound fall for comes away with it. Michael Boyd underneath. Boyd brings it down the middle of the court to Pike Central. Stops out at the top of the key, keeps his dribble alive. Look, picks up his dribble now, gives it off to Gillespie on the left side. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd looking. Pike Central trying to get got three people down on the baseline. Sean Scott calling a play. They try to throw it back over to the left. Gillespie for three. It's short. Tristan Davis goes up the rebound. Sean Scott gets it. Takes it up. Tristan Davis takes it away from him. Blocked in there by Corbin. Scott has it. Puts it up. Reverse layup. No good. Blocked away. And this will go out of bounds. Off of Sean Corbin. Matt, Matt Corbin. Corbin back to Pike County Center. <laughs> yeah, Dude. Sean Scott will inbound it underneath his own basket. Pike leads it 8-7. to 5-0-3 to go in the first quarter. Scott gets it in. Gillespie a three from the left corner. No good. Rebound. Sean Scott gets it. Knocked away by Adam Myers. He takes it down to the other end. Pulls it back out. We'll wait on his teammates. Throws it down in the corner to Howard. Back out on top. Gibson from the top of the key. Puts up a three. Short. Sean Scott gets the rebound. He gets it up to Michael Boyd. Boyd will take it down the left side of the court. Tries to take it all the way into the paint. Gets it down low to Clevenger. Clevenger has it just inside the three-point line. Gives it back out to Boyd. Boyd has it. Throws down inside to Tristan Davis. Davis gets it back outside to Gillespie. Sean Scott on the right side. Down low it goes. Chris Clevenger. Strong move. Puts it up and in. 9-8, Pike County Central, 4.26 to go in the first quarter. And Myers will bring it across the midcourt stripe, slowing it down, being more deliberate on the pike line. He gets a pick in there. Gillespie comes out and gets him, gets it off to Howard. Howard looking inside, gets it down low to Myers. Myers puts up a three. It's going to be short. And Boyd comes down with a rebound for Pike Central. He picks it up at the four-on-three bake. Boyd tries to throw it down low, and he throws it out of bounds. It'll go off of Jason Gillespie back to Pike and I tell you what, it's been an up and down ball game. Kid. It sure has. Adam Myers will again bring it up to Pike. Slowly brings it across midcourt. Pike trails by one, nine to eight. Three fifty-four to go in the first quarter. Myers drives down inside, takes it up, no good. Rebound comes off to Davis. Davis gets it up to Boyd. Boyd tries to take it across court. He gets it knocked away by Gibson, and he gets it up to Adam Myers. Gibson tries to go inside, tries to dunk it, and does. Gibson forces it through the hoop. It's 10 to 9 with five, three and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. And what a ball game is. Boyd takes it all the way in, lays it up off the backboard, no good. Rebound comes off to Chase Gibson for Pikeville. So Pikeville makes a run here. They've got the one point lead. 320 to go in the first quarter. Adam Myers sets up the play at it midcourt. And we've got a double foul down inside, I believe. Let's see. It'll be on 14 and 32. So Boyd. Michael Boyd and Paul Howard. And and Paul. That's, that's Boyd's second. That's also Paul Howard's second. And each team with two fouls. Both those young men have all of them. And Pike Central will get the ball on the alternating possession. Into the ball game for Pike Central is Barry Sanders. And Dave Cecil in for Pike. The two People get that bidding the foul come out of the ball game. John Scott has it down underneath the pipe basket. He's trying to bring it up against seat. seat. Yeah. He gets it down to Gillespie. He gets it out on top of Davis. Davis gives it back up to Scott. Scott out front. Gives it back up to Barry Sanders. And they'll start their offense from there. Box Central trailing by one, 10 to 9. They get it down, try to throw down in the corner to Scott. He picks up the loose ball. Throws long cross course pass to Davis. Davis gets it back out on top of Sanders. Off to the left side, down low, it goes Davis underneath. Chris Clevenger lays it up, no good. Goes up for his own rebound, but Chase Gibson comes away with it. Nice feed in there by Tristan Davis. And we got a charging foul on the other end on Dave Cecil. And great job by Barry Sanders as he saw Cecil running the baseline. He got over Teddy Moss and drew the charge. And 2.35 to play in the first quarter. Pikeville gets the steal. Adam Myers comes up with it. He tries to take it down low, throws it away as... Chris Clevenger looks like he's going to take it all the way to the basket. He lays it up and in, and there's going to be a charging foul on the other end. Won't count. As Corey Russell in position to draw the charge. 10-9, 228 to play in the first quarter, and we've had a lot of action in this first one. Adam Myers will walk it up for Pike. They've got the one-point lead. And they... 
Adam Myers takes, tries to take it inside, kicks it back out. Three-point shot up by Branham, no good. He gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. So it's 12 to nine now, Pikeville up by three. And here comes Sean Scott with it. Quite a job by Branham following his own shot. John Scott tries to get underneath Clevenger, lays it up and in. What a pass from Scott and great hands by Chris Clevenger. He well, puts it up and in. 12 to 11 now, 150 to play in the first quarter. Adam Myers walks it across the Pikeman. Myers stays out about the midcourt. Tries to get it down low, that's Cecil with it. He tries to throw it in, Sean Scott comes up with the steal. It's a foot race to the other end. Sean Scott goes up and misses it. <coughs> And me. here come the Panthers. Adam Myers down the court, and Chris Clevenger intercepts it. Gets it to Scott. Scott on the run. All the way, and we've got a blocking foul. And I'll tell you, a lot of action both ways here as Dave Cecil upset on the call. And the officials haven't, I think, had a talk with him there. Yeah, Sean Scott will be at the line for two. 12 to 11, a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. I don't know if we can, this is going to be a, an exciting ball game, Ken. It certainly is. John Scott puts up the first one. It's short. He'll have one more. One chance to tie here. Matt Corbin into the ball game. Chase Gibson will take a break. Scott eyes the basket. Puts up the second. This one's good. We're all tied at 12 with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. And Sean Scott's going to take the seat, and Michael Boyd will come back into the ball game. Adam Myers will bring it up for Piker. He's going to walk it down. He's going to be picked up by Boyd in the backcourt. Boyd lets him bring it into the front court now. He has it out top. Pick set out there for him. Good switch. As Branham has it, gives it back to Myers over to Cecil. Cecil looking inside. Gets it down low to Adam Myers. Adam Myers takes it outside, gets it to Corey Russell. Back out top, Myers will attempt a three from top of the key. It's good. 15 to 12 now, Pike up by three. Sanders has it, Pike Central gives it up to Davis. Davis takes it across, throws it down low to Hensley. Back to Davis. Back out on top to Sanders off to Boyd. Boyd will bring it back up to the front and set his play again. He gives it back to Sanders. Sanders looking inside. He throws it down low to Gillespie. Back out to Sanders. Sanders gets Boyd at the top of the key. Boyd thought about the three. Gives it up Davis. Davis will put up the three. It's good. 15 all. 30 seconds to play in the first half. First quarter. And Myers will bring it up. He'll be picked up up there by, by Boyd. Gives it off to Corbin. Corbin looking down inside. Gives it up to Cecil. Cecil has it over on the right side. Gives it back out on top of Corbin. Corbin gives it to Myers coming down, nice pass off Myers. He puts it off to Cecil. Cecil shot, no good. Rebound put back up and in by Matt Brandon. Six seconds to play in the first quarter. Four. Boyd takes it down the lane, gets it off to Sanders. Sanders, the ball knocked away, and that'll end the first quarter. 17 to 15. Pikeville over Pike County Central. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. County Central High School, we've completed one quarter and Pikeville leading 17 to 15 over the Pike County Central Hawks. And Adam Myers brings it into the front court to Pikeville. He'll be picked up out there by Michael Boyd. Myers being very deliberate, trying to work the ball down inside. Chase Gibson has it top of the key, gets it back out down low. Matt Branham will put up a three. It's good. So all of a sudden, it's 2015, biggest lead of the ball game so far for Pikeville. Boyd. Has it, trying to bring it up against the pressure, throws it down to Hensley, Hensley gives it back to Scott. Scott tries to answer with a three the other way, no good. Ball, rebound comes off to Corey Russell. Corey Russell. And Adam Myers will bring it up, a five point lead for the Blackwell Panthers now, 7.23 to go in the first half. And they get it down low to, we have a call down on the baseline. Don't know exactly what happened there, but they stopped play. And we'll bring, Pye will bring the ball in from the side. It's hit in to Adam Myers. Myers gets it back to Branham. Branham has it on the left side. Gets it down low to Russell. Back out to Branham. Down low it goes. Chase Gibson puts it up and in. 
Seven point lead now as Pike will really start to stretch it out. Michael Boyd tries to bring it down for Pike Central against the pressure. Gives it back to Sean Scott. He's still in the backcourt. He gets it across to Michael Boyd. Michael Boyd has it in the front court on the, on the front of the scorer's table. And he, he's, in, he's in trouble. He gets it rid of it. And we're going to have a timeout, 30 second timeout called by Pike County Central. So we'll keep it right here, Ken. Keep it right here. And uh, I guess that answered a question from our earlier game. Is that timeout called by the bench? Yep. Under pressure. We had that same situation in the uh, opening game, the girls' game. <laughs> right. And I wasn't sure of the ruling on that, but uh, evidently that is the rule. But, Obviously uh, so. What an intense battle out here as uh, both feel. teams really, really playing aggressively. And uh, both teams shooting well. Uh, Adam Myers really lighting it up. He had eight points in that first quarter. He was perfect. Hit two threes and a two-point field goal. Uh, Matt Branham already has seven points, and Chase Gibson with seven. So uh, the big three there for Pottenwell has all the scoring. And uh, Tristan Davis is uh, perfect from the field. He's hit a two-point field goal and a three-pointer. Sean Scott with six points, and Chris Clevenger with four. So Sean Scott will bring it in from the sideline in front of the bench. He gets it in the backcourt to Boyd. Boyd will walk it up. Uh, Pike Central has, I'm sure, a set play out of the timeout. to get it over to Sanders. He looks inside, gets it down low to Davis, back out on top to Sanders. Round the horn it goes. It's over to Clevenger in the corner, back out to Boyd on top. Boyd gets it over to Sanders. Sanders looking inside. It's back out to Boyd. Back to Sanders, down in the corner to Davis. Davis brings it around the corner, back out on top of Boyd. Boyd has it at the top of the key. Gives it up to Sanders. Sanders tries to throw it inside, stolen away by Chase Gibson. And I tell you, good defense in there by Gibson. Myers Absolutely. Will walk, Myers will walk it up across the timeline. Boyd picks him up out there. He tries to, guys gives up to, <clears throat> excuse me, down low it goes to Branham, back out on top to Russell. Down, try to get down to Gibson, knocked away. And Pike Central comes up with it. Sean Scott will push it down across the timeline. Tries to take it all the way inside. Loses it, picks it back up, loses it, picks it back up, and I think he's fouled. Yeah, that foul will go against Corey Russell of the Panthers. That'll be his first. The team's fifth foul. Scott's a quick. He can pick it up three times and drop it. <laughs> and he has it down on the baseline underneath the basket. But Kurgan gets it into Davis. Back out on top, it goes to Sanders. They go inside to Clevenger. Turn around by Clevenger. No good. Rebound comes off to Gibson. Still 22-15, 5.40 to play in the first half. Myers brings it across the timeline. He's guarded out there by Boyd. Myers tries to take it down the right side. Brings it back out top. Brings it over to the left. Gets it off. Ran him a big three from the left side. No good. Rebound comes off inside to Sanders. He gets it up to Boyd. Boyd pushing it down the middle of the court, brings it across timeline over to the right side. Scott fakes the three, gets it under Davis, turn around jumper, in, out, and back in again. 22-17 with 5-13 to play in the first half. Myers will walk it up for Pike. Pike will be picked up up there again by Boyd in the backcourt. Brings it across the timeline, backs it into the corner there. Stands out at the top, five minutes to play. And Russell gets it over down in the corner to... Cecil, Cecil on the miss. misses it and rebound comes off to Clevenger. Strong rebound by Clevenger. Boyd bringing it down court, cross court to Scott. He puts up the three, no good. Rebound comes off to Chase Gibson. And Gibson will bring it up for Pike. Gets it over to Branham. Branham for another three. It's good. And I'll tell you, Matt Branham lighting it up. He sure is. He's, he's got 10 points. He's 4-4 four, four from the field, two of those three-pointers. Sean Scott has it. Gives it back out on top to Sanders. Michael Boyd will move out to the top of the key to run the point. Boyd has it. Brings it over to the right side. Throws it cross court to Davis. Davis has it. Gives it out to Sanders. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd thought about the three. Drives. Takes it inside. And we've got a foul. On the floor. I believe it. Going against Adam Myers. That'll be Myers' second foul. 16 fouls. So one more and Pike Central well, will be in the bonus. That's actually Myers' uh, first foul. Sean Scott will trigger it in from the baseline. Matt Corbin back in the game for Pike Boy as Corey Russell goes out. They throw it back out on top to Boyd. Boyd takes it back to the top of the key. Dribbling, looking, getting his play set up. 
Waiting, gets it down low to Davis. Down in the right point, left corner, back across, he goes down on her side. It, Davis back on the left side again with it. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd has it at the top of the key, down, down to the left side it goes to Davis. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd tries to get it inside, he does. Clevenger, turn around jumper, no good. Rebound fought for, and it's gonna be an over the back call on Sean Scott, I believe. And that'll be Scott's first foul. Four team fouls now on Pike County Central. The Pike will bring it up the court. 3.41 to go in the first half. It's 25-17, Pike. Adam Myers again brings it up. He'll pick, be picked up again by Boyd at midcourt. Myers gets it to Gibson at the free throw line. Gibson puts up the turnaround jumper. It's good. 27-17, 10-point lead now. Largest of the night for Pikeman. Barry Sanders has it for Pike Central. Gives it back to Scott. Scott brings it across the timeline. Gives it back up to Boyd. Boyd will run the offense from the top of the key. Boyd gets it off to Sanders. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd gives it back up to Davis. Down low it goes to Scott. Back out on Davis at the front of the key. Back to Scott. Scott looks at the three. Gives it back up to Boyd. Boyd has it. Gives it down to Scott. Down in the corner. Scott fakes the three again. Gives it back out top to Boyd. So to Sanders. Sanders looking inside. Gets it into Davis. Shot by Boyd for three is good. 27 20, 249 to go in the first half. Adam Myers will bring it up to Pike. He'll be met at midcourt again by Boyd. Boyd backs off now. Myers brings, takes it out on the right side. We've got a foul away from the ball. And let's see what it's going to be on Pikeville, I believe. Matt Corbin called. And the ball will go back to Pike Central, trailing by seven, 27 to 20, with 2.38 to go in the first half. And that'll be Corbin's second foul. Or that, actually, that went against Chris Clevenger of Pike Central. Okay. So that was the second foul on Clevenger. Well, Pike thought it was on them. They all walked to the other end of the floor. The official said no. <laughs> and they'll come back the other way. Lanham has it over in the right corner. Gets it back out on top. Myers. Gibson from three from the top of the key. In and out. And rebound being fought for inside. And it's still fought for. It's on the floor. And it's going to be a jump ball, I believe. Yep. It'll go back to Pike County Central. 2.24 to go in the first half. 27-20. Pike will up by seven. Pike Central will have the ball on the alternating possession. And got a wet spot on the floor, so the officials are going to mop it up. Probably need that break to take a breather, too, Jim. Right. As Sanders will bring the ball in from underneath the pipe basket. He gets it into Boyd. Boyd walks it down the court. 2.20 to play in the first half. Boyd has it out at the top of the key. Gets it down low to Scott. Scott gives it inside to Hensley. Hensley puts it up, blocked in there by Gibson. Sanders gets the loose ball. Myers knocks it away, and he takes it all the way to the other end. Misses the leaf. Short rock put back up and in by Cecil, Dave Cecil. And Boyd brings it back down. He's back to a nine-point lead for Pike. Boyd looks at the three, gets it down low to Davis. Davis guarded down there by Corbin. Gets it back out to Boyd. Boyd, they get it inside. Back out it comes to you. Sanders, the 10 footer, no good. Rebound comes off to Cease Myers, and we're going to have a foul. The, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who that one was on. I'm not thinking it's Tristan Davis. And it is. That'll be Davis' first foul. Six team fouls now on Pike Central. Each team with six. Myers gets it down to Cecil. He gets it underneath to Corbin. Corbin double team down there, gets it back out to Myers. Down low goes to Gibson. Gibson turn around hook, good. 31 to 20, an 11 point lead. Again, the biggest of the game for Pikeville. A minute and a half to go in the first half. Boyd gets it down inside, back out Gillespie. Boyd at the top of the key, puts up a three. No good, rebound comes off this time to Matt Branham for Pikeville. And here comes Adam Myers with it. Myers takes it down into the paint, gets it down low to Cecil. Cecil puts up a three, no good. Matt Corbin goes in, gets the rebound, knocks it around, and it's being fought for inside. Saved into Sean Scott. Scott taking it all the way down the court, goes up, lays it up and in. 22-31 with just a minute to play. And here comes Myers back the other way with it. Adam Myers drives into the free throw line, brings it back out. Takes it all the way back out in front of the Pike Central bench, gives it out on top to Gibson at the top of the key. Gibson throws it down low to Myers, breaking for the basket, lays it up and in. 
33-22. Still an 11-point lead for Biden. Boyd brings it across the timeline. Looking, gives it back outside to Gillespie. Just Sean Scott on the left side, back to Gillespie. Boyd back inside, it goes to Hensley. Hensley gives it back out on top to Boyd. Down low it goes to Davis. He gets it inside to Hensley. Hensley, nice pass back to Gillespie. He lays it up and in. 33-24. Beautiful, beautiful pass from Hensley. Adam Myers in the backcourt with it. And we've got a timeout, Pikeman. Let's see, is it going to be a 30 or a full? They've not made a call yet. Let's see what the officials are going to call. Only 13 seconds remaining. 30 seconds. 30. We'll just keep it right here, but 33-24 uh, at, at the pace they've been playing. You would think it's going to be in the 60s or something, but uh, both teams really, really playing hard defensively. And uh, quite a match up here. I'll tell you, it has been both teams. You know, Pipe really going to the boards right now, making it tough on Pike Central inside. And 13 seconds to play here. Nine-point advantage for Pikeville, and they'll have the ball. I don't know, Ken, it's been, it's been a battle. Yes, it has. As the, the seniors of Pikeville have really stepped up here. Matt Branham really, really hitting the boards hard and uh, playing great defense, and uh, he's, he's also got uh, 10 points. Hasn't missed a field goal attempt. Adam Myers has been lighting it up, and Chase Gibson. And looks like Pike Central has Grigsby into the game. And he'll be picking up Myers in the backcourt. Nine seconds to play. Myers drives all the way to the basket, stolen away, but it'll go back to Pikeville with five seconds on the clock. Good job by Grigsby. And Pikeville will have it underneath their own basket. Again, five seconds. Chase Gibson to bring the ball in bounds. Gibson gets it out to Myers. Myers has it top of the key, gets it up to Gibson again. Gibson puts up the three from the top of the key off the backboard, no good. So at the end of the first half, it's Pikeville 33, Pike Central 24. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. Central, it's halftime. Pikeville has the nine-point lead, 33 to 24, in what has been a ferocious game, I guess would be a good word for it, Ken. Yes, it has. Both teams really playing hard. Uh, let's run down the scoring. First for Pike County Central, they were led by Sean Scott with eight points, seven for Tristan Davis, four for Chris Clevenger, three for Michael Boyd, and two for Jason Gillespie. Pikeville led in scoring by Chase Gibson with 11, 10 for Matt Branham, 10 for Adam Myers, and two for Dave Cecil. The turnovers, uh, Pike Central committed seven in the first half, Pikeville with five, and uh, Pike Central went on a had a long dry spell there as uh, Davis hit a short jumper there early in the second quarter, and then they went quite some time before another field goal. Michael Boyd hit a big three, and uh, then they were able to put a couple more buckets in there. But uh, the Panthers have really been uh, really been playing well, Charlie. Uh, yes, Chase Gibson's have. really come to play tonight. He's got 11 points, and he's uh, got a couple of blocks and, and uh, playing hard defensively and rebounding. Uh, Matt Branham's just all over the place tonight. And uh, Adam Myers doing a fine job running the team. Uh, we saw uh, saw Sean Scott get off to a great start. He had six points there in the first quarter, but uh, they've they've contained him to hold him to eight points and a half is uh, quite a job defensively. Yes, it, it certainly is. And uh, I know when they run the man to man there, uh, Matt Branham was uh, was sticking right with him. Branham, as I've said a lot this year, is as good a defensive player as there is in the 15th region. We've right. seen him shut down some great scores this year. But the last few minutes of the half there, Pikeville went to a zone and uh, did a really good job uh, switching up there. Made it difficult for Pike Central to get, get a good shot. That's true. You know, at halftime, it's 33-24. And, you know, if you're Pike Central, you got to come out with some offensive power here in this second half to get back in this one quick. If not, you're going to stay home. 
We've said it all season long. One of the three best players in the in the region is going to sit home because you got Pike, well, Pike Central and Shelby Valley, and Chase Gibson or Sean Scott's not going to be in a regional tournament. One of them will not be there and uh, yet to remain. At, at this point, it, it, uh, Chase, or, uh, Chase Gibson in the lead here by nine as he, he and his team, but uh, we've still got a long half to go here, and uh, things can turn around in a hurry when these two teams meet. We've seen them have some great battles earlier this year. Yes, sir. And uh, you better stay tuned because it'll be an exciting second half. So we're going to kick it back to the station now and take a break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with second half action as your score here from Pike County Central is Pikeville 33, Pike Central 24 on the Intermountain Sports Network. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. And welcome back to Pike County Central. Your halftime score, Pike Bull 33, Pike Central 24. This is the semifinals of the 59th District Tournament. And Jim, what a half. Uh, quite a half, even though Pike Bull leads it by nine. It uh, was a very entertaining half. Both teams really getting after it. Uh, not a lot of scoring. And, uh, and for near, not nearly as much scoring as you would have thought by watching the game with That's all the right. excitement and the, and the great hustling. But uh, got to give both these teams a lot of credit. They're really, really playing hard. Yes, they have. They've been running up and down the floor. I mean, it's been all out war both ways as they've really been laying it on the line, haven't they? So look for Sean Scott to come out and, and put a little bit more in. Take more control of the ball game for Pike County Central. Chase Gibson to keep doing what he's been doing is he's had a pretty good half. He certainly has. Defensively, more so than offensively, maybe. Matt Branham then bound it for Pike. He gets it into Adam Myers. Myers has it in the backcourt. Myers will walk it across the timeline, gets it down low to Howard. Goes inside to Gibson. Out of bounds. It'll go back to Pike. Pike Central, excuse me. As Paul Howard throws it away. And Pike's Pike will in full court pressure. They get it into Boyd. Boyd brings it up toward midcourt, gets it across to Scott. Knocked away in there by Chase Gibson. Gibson. Picked up Paul Howard, gets it across to Myers. Myers gets it down low to Corbin. They try to go into Gibson. Gibson will turn around jumper, puts it in. 35-24, an 11-point lead now for Pike. Michael Boyd has it, gets it back to Scott. Scott throws it across to Tristan Davis. Davis has it out the top of the court, midcourt. Gets rid of it back to Boyd. Boyd goes in. Gets it off to Davis from about 10 feet. No good. Rebound comes off to Corbin, and we've got a foul. And Tristan Davis will be called for reaching in. That'll be his second. Team's first here in the second half. Pible comes out doing the same thing they've done earlier, playing tough interior defense. Myers brings it up the court. Should bring it across midcourt here. Has it over on the left side. Guys down top of the key gets it off to you. Howard, Howard gets it back out on top of Myers. Myers to Corbin, back to Myers. Myers backs up to midcourt, resets his play. Gets it down low to Branham. Branham looking inside. Branham tries to get it into Gibson, knocked away. Gibson runs it down. And Gibson tries to throw it away as Tristan Davis comes up with it. Gives it to Michael Boyd. Boyd brings it across midcourt. Gives it off to Sean Scott. Scott drives down the middle, gives it up to Gillespie. Nice pass, Gillespie puts it up in the end. 26-35 now, nine-point advantage for Piper. Myers, walk. Great defense down here by Chris Clevenger on Chase Gibson on that previous possession. Myers walks it down. He takes it, tries to get it inside. Stolen away by Sean Scott. Scott loses the ball, goes back and gets it. Brings it across midcourt. Tries to take it down the lane, kicks it back to Boyd. Boyd has it out at the top of the key. Waiting on his team to get set. Boyd. Being very patient out there. Picks up his dribble, gives it to Sean Scott on the left side. Scott back to Boyd. Boyd takes it down the right side, takes it inside, it goes to. And Chris Pevenger gets ready to go to the basket, but he's fouled. He'll be on the floor. And that foul going against Matt Branham. Branham's first foul, first team foul on the Panthers in the second half. Fox Central will have it underneath for their own basket. Sean Scott throws it in. And Clevenger goes up, misses the shot, and Gibson comes down with the rebound. 
Myers pushes it across for Pikeville, brings that top of the key. And he'll bring it back at the midcourt and reset his play again. Myers takes it down the right side this time, back out on top of the key with it. Guarded by Gillespie, takes it down into the paint, brings it back out again. He runs it all the way back out to the top of the key, gets it down to Howard, back out on top, it goes to Myers. Pike will be very patient here. Myers trying to work the ball down inside. He gets it up to Howard. Howard has it out at the top of the key, gets it down to Gibson in the left corner. Gibson looking, gets it back out on top of Matt Brandon. Brandon thought about the shot, picks it up, drives, takes it all the way inside, gets it off to Corbin. Corbin puts it up in the end. Great feed for Matt Brandon to Matt Corbin. And Davis has it, Cox Edward gives it up to Gillespie. Gillespie gets it across court to Sean Scott. Scott takes it inside. We got a charging foul on Sean Scott. Incredible call out there. I believe, I believe he missed that one. I think Gibson was falling away. I don't think he had the position. And Coach David Rowe, Pike Central wants a timeout. So 5.04 to go in the third quarter. It's 37-26 Pikeville on the Intermountain Sports Network. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. And welcome back to Pike County Central High School. We've got 5.04 to go in the third quarter. Pikeville leading 11 points, 37-26 over Pike Central. Adam Myers has it off the pipe. He'll bring it down court. He brings it up mid court, picked up out there by Boyd. He's going to cross the timeline. It's over and back on Pike, and it'll go back to Pike County Central. And Gillespie will bring the ball out from the side. And he gives it to Boyd in the backcourt. Boyd will bring it across the timeline. Boyd has it out on the right side of the key. Across to Sean Scott to the left side. Back out top to Scott, back over to Boyd. And they go down low to Kristen Davis. He takes it inside, kicks it back to Boyd. Boyd will put up a three from the top of the key. It's good. 37-29 now. Fight will up by eight. And Meyer pushes it down court, gets it into Howard. Howard goes inside, puts a shot up. It goes down. And... Back outside to Gibson. Gibson shot no good. Rebound fought for, and we'll have a foul on somebody. Looks like it'll be on Pike. There's about six players in there. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Everybody Long going game. after the ball. Both teams really hitting the board hard. And Matt Corbin called for the foul. Corbin's first foul, second team foul. Each team with two fouls here in the second half. And Pike, Pike Central will bring it down to the Pikeville basket. Four four pressure again by Pike. Will they get it into Boyd? Boyd gets it back to Davis. Davis back to Boyd. They're still in the backcourt with it. Boyd brings it up, throws a long pass down to Sean Scott. Scott turns, goes to the basket, goes around, misses the shot, and gets foul on the rebound as he goes over the back of uh, Dave Cecil. And a great drive to the bucket by Scott. Great job of body control to avoid the charge, and then he comes over the back. Out of frustration on the missed shot. That's his third. And here comes Dave C I mean, excuse me. Myers with it, gives it to Cecil, back to Myers. Myers takes it down into the paint, gives it up. Corey Russell, 10-footer, no good. Rebound comes off in there to Myers, and we got a jump ball. Uh, it's tied up by Michael Boyd, was out of Myers, and possession goes back to Pike County Central. 3.55 to play in the third quarter, 29-37. And Boyd gets it back to Davis. Davis gives it up to Gillespie. Cross court it goes to Boyd. He gets it across the timeline, picked up out there by Myers. And Boyd still has it. Gets it inside to Clevenger. Back out to Scott. Over to Boyd. Boyd at the top of the key with it. Gets it inside to Clevenger. Clevenger back out to Boyd. Boyd for three. No good. Rebound comes off to Cecil. Long down court pass to Corey Russell. And Russell backs it back out. Gets it out to Cecil. Cecil tries to throw it away. Stolen away by Gillespie. And knocked away down on the other end by Gibson. And there are five for Boyd on the floor. And we've got a tie up. It's a jump ball. I believe that Dave Cecil may have got the bad end of that deal. He did. He was on the floor, and Clevenger came diving in and with a hard lick going for the ball. And Paul Howard back into the game for Piper. 
37 to 29, a eight point lead for Pikeville, 318 to go in the third quarter. Gibson, I mean, excuse me, get it into Myers. Myers brings it down the middle of the court, takes it down, he has it over on the left side of the key, brings it out to the top, back at midcourt again with it. Guarded out there by Gillespie. He gets it down to Russell. Russell gets down in the corner to Branham. Branham tries to get it inside, knocked away, stolen. Box set will have it. Here comes Michael Boyd. He tries to get it down, and we've got a foul. And it'll yeah. be on Matt Branham. Great hustle by Chris Clevenger to come out with that steal there. Great anticipation. And Branham picks up his second foul, team's third. And Box Central will have the ball out of bounds. Mid court. Sean Scott will bring it in for Pike, Pike Central. He throws it into Michael Boyd in the backcourt. We've played uh, over five minutes here in the quarter, and Pike Central's outscored Pike with five to four. Very little scoring here in this yep. second half. They get it down low, down in the corner to Davis. Davis with it, throws it out top to Gillespie. Gillespie gets it to Boyd at the top of the key. Back to Gillespie down in the corner. Davis puts up a three. No good. Davis goes in. Bicefort goes down hard, but Myers comes away with the rebound. And we've got a foul on the other end. Yeah, it's a hard foul by Tristan Davis. And a nice job over there by Corey Russell to help Davis up and check on him. Good sportsmanship. Corey Russell, a fine young man. And yeah, that foul went against number 12, Jason Gillespie. His first, the team's fourth in the second half. As Davis high in the air following his shot uh, took a hard spill as he was he was stretched straight out and, and uh, landed flat on the floor face first. He uh, saw some blood look like over his right eye there as he really took a hard lick. Christian Davis, a big strong kid. He'll, he'll be fine. Well, he'll be back in the ball game. You can bet money on that. And, and great hustle by Davis as he shot that from deep in the corner and was really hustling to uh, follow his shot. Got inside to uh, fight for the rebound. Took the spill. It's still 37-29. Two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter as they're wiping up uh, perspiration off the floor for some more Davis slid. And we're just about ready for action here. Four team fouls on Pike Central. Three on Pike. Interesting stat here, Charlie. Uh, the Hawks, Pike County Central Hawks, are sixth in the state in scoring and fourth in the state in field goal percentage. If they only have 29 points here uh, with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. So this is not a typical night for the no, Hawks. No, it isn't. As Myers brings, tries to bring the ball in bounds, he gets it into Corbin. And he gives it back to Myers at the top of the key with it. Myers backs up to midcourt again. Picked up back there by Sanders. He tries to drive, loses it off of his heel, picks it back up. He tries to drive back inside again, takes it down into the paint, gets it down low to Corbin. Corbin back to Myers. Myers from about 15. No good. Rebound knocked out. It'll be picked up in there by Howard. Howard puts the shot up. No good. And Sean Scott comes away with the rebound. Scott takes it down, gives it up to Gillespie, and it goes out of bounds off of Gillespie. Yes, Gillespie just lost a great pass from Sean Scott. Couldn't hold on to it. Back into the ball game, Corey Russell. Corey Russell. Branham gets it into Myers. Myers underneath the Pike Central basket. We'll walk it, they will push it down the floor. Now gets it down to Gibson at the top of the key. We'll get it down low to Corey Russell. Blocked in there by Sean Scott. He goes and gets the ball. Takes it back the other way. He's going down the lane, knocked away inside. And Chase Gibson comes up with the steal. What a game by Chase Gibson tonight as he's just laying it all on the floor. He certainly is. And he loses the ball, but he goes back and gets it, gets it off. Myers, a long three, no good. Rebound comes off, and foul will be on Matt, Matt Corbin. Corbin. He'll go back the other way. Still an eight-point lead, 37 to 29. We've been stuck at that for a while as we got Quite a while. seven seconds to play in the third quarter. That's Pockville with two field goals in the second half. Pock Central with two field goals. Uh, here comes Sean Scott with it. Takes it down inside, pulls up from the free throw line, lays it up and in. 37-31, now a six-point advantage for Pikeville. Myers, uh, we have a timeout on the floor to the Pikeville Panthers. Let's see. Is it going to be a 30 or a 4? We've got 126 to go in the third quarter. It's 37. Hey, one minute. 
He had, uh, he had already gone. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you want to do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors, and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. And Pock will inbounds the ball as they lead it 37-31. One twenty to go in the third quarter. Myers brings it across timeline, gives up to Gibson, lay out at the top of the key. Gibson standing out there with it, guarded out there by Clevenger. He said, off Corbin. Back out on top of Gibson. Gibson puts it on the floor. Takes it down inside. Gives it down low to Branham. Branham from 15. No good. Rebound fall for Sean Scott comes away with it. He splits two. He's going this one on three. Sean Scott's going down the other way. Puts it up and in. 37-33. Now four-point game with 57 seconds to go in the half and a turnover by Pike. And it'll go back to Pike Central with 47.5 seconds to go. 37-33, and we've got our ball game again. Yes, we have. The way back into it, they're down by four. They have the ball with 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Michael Boyd will bring it up to Pike Central. He walks across the timeline. Tries to get it down low to Clevenger. He does. Clevenger kicks it back in the corner to Scott. Scott takes down the baseline, but they say he got fouled. I think he got fouled on the baseline. As yes, that foul will go against Corey Russell. Gonna be Corey's second foul. Pike Central will have the ball down. fifth foul. They'll have it down underneath their own basket. They get it into Gillespie, back out on top of Boyd. Boyd looking inside, takes it back to the top of the key. Back out it to midcourt with it. And Boyd just standing out there waiting for the running clock down. There's 20 seconds to go. It's it over to Sanders, back to Boyd. He goes inside with it, back out to Boyd. Boyd drives, kicks it off to Gillespie for three. In and out, and it goes back in. So 37-36, seven seconds to go. Howard gets the ball down. Gibson puts up the three, and he's killed over on the far side. A hard foul over there by Gillespie. And that's going to put Gibson on the line for three. Only two and a half seconds to go here in the quarter, and uh, Gibson uh, in a, a tough shot there. So he was trying to force it up before the clock went off. Uh, Gillespie would have been better off to let, let that one go and take his chances on him hitting it. For two and a half seconds, you know, take, take the chance. Don't give him the chance to go to the free throw line. Gibson, a good free throw shooter. He'll have three. He makes the first one. He'll have two more. 38-36, Pike. Gibson's second shot is also good. He has one more. 39-36. Pike, Pike will open Pike Central by three. Third shot by Gibson comes off. Clevenger gets the rebound, long heave over the back of the backboard. He did that last year against McGoffin County and won the ball game. <laughs> so at the end of three quarters, 39-36, Pikeville will be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. For fourth quarter action, 39 to 36, Pike will on top for Pike Central. Pike Central will have the ball. Boyd gets it in the backcourt. He'll walk it across the timeline. And Boyd backs out at midcourt with it, setting up his offense, gives it over to Sanders. Back to Boyd. Boyd gets down in the corner of Gillespie. He tries to drive, kicks it back out to Boyd. Boyd has it out at the top of the key, gets it over to Sanders. Sanders gets it off to Sean Scott. Scott from about 18. It's good. 39-38, a one-point ball game now. Seven and a half minutes to play. And here comes Paul Howard down the court with it for Pike. We're in a hurry. He gets it back out to Myers. Myers the top of the key, gets it over to Cecil. Down low it goes to Branham. Branham down in the corner with it. Back out on top to Cecil. Or Myers back down to Branham in the corner. 
Granham looking inside, trying to get into Gibson back out on top to Myers. Myers has it back out at midcourt. Guarded out there by Barry Sanders. Adam Myers and Barry Sanders. Adam Myers and Barry Sanders. And back to Paul Howard it goes. Back to Cecil. Back to Chase Gibson for three at the top of the key. He puts it in. Got a 22-23 footer by Gibson for three. 42-38. Fight. John Scott in the backcourt with it. Brings it across midcourt. Takes it, gets it down low to Gillespie. Gillespie looks. Kicks it back out on top to Barry Sanders. Sanders back to Scott. Scott to Sanders. Sanders gives it back up to Boyd, and they'll restart the offense from there. Boyd takes it down to the top of the key. Looking inside. Gets it inside to Clevenger. Clevenger tries to go up against Gibson. Kicks it back out to Scott. Scott for three. It's good. It's 42, 41, six and a half minutes to play in the ball game. And I tell you what, it's Sean Scott and Chase Gibson stepping up big for their respective teams here. The prime time players stepping up here in prime time. Gibson has it back out at the top of the key. He spins, takes down in the lane, knocked away by Sean Scott. Scott knocks it away again, picks up the steal. Scott coming down the floor, gives it off to Gillespie. Gillespie lays it up, no good. Five for the rebound inside, comes away to Corey Russell. Myers loses the ball, he goes back, Sean Scott goes out ahead, he takes it in, lays it up and in. It's 43-42, Fox Central taking the lead with six minutes to go in the ball game. And we have a timeout on the floor, and it will be a full timeout for the Pike of the so With six minutes to go, it's 43-42, Pox Central on the Intermountain Sports Network. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. And we're back here at Pike County Central High School as Pikeville will inbound the ball. They trail by one as Pike Central came back to take the lead. The first time since the first quarter, the Hawks have been in the lead. It's 43-42, 5.50 to go in the ball game. Adam Myers brings it up against Sanders. Sanders and Myers out front. Sanders all over him. Myers takes it down in the lane, knocked away. Sean Scott with the steal, but he comes back to Branham. He gives it up to Myers. Myers puts it up and in. 44-43, Pikeville back on top by one. Long cross-court pass, almost intercepted. Here comes Boyd down the middle. It goes, Clevenger lays it up, bounces off. Clevenger goes up and Gibson gets the rebound. He gets it ahead to Corey, to Dave Cecil. Dave Cecil goes all the way to the other end, misses the shot. Rebound comes off Paul Howard. He gets it blocked, but there's a foul. Great block by Barry Sanders. And the Pike Central fans upset, and the Pikeville fans are happy. <laughs> Somebody's going to be right. And that is going against Barry Sanders. A one-point ball game right now. Pikeville on top, 44-43 to 43 with 524 to play. And I'll tell you, it's been all we could ask for so far. Yes, it has. Paul Howard misses the first free throw. He'll have one more. He's eyeing the basket, puts it on the floor, puts the second one up. This one's good. It's 45-43, two-point ball game. They get it into Boyd. Boyd gets it up to Gillespie. Gillespie tries to get it back to Boyd. It's tipped out by Howard. Down in the corner, it'll go to Pike Central. And Corey Russell back in the ball game for Pike. Well, Dave Cecil comes out. And we're trying to decide who's going to throw the ball inbounds for Pike Central. Barry Sanders. Sanders. Barry Sanders gets it, and he tries to get it in, gets it into Clevenger, back to Sanders. He gives it up to Gillespie. The long pass knocked away by Gibson, picked up down inside. Gibson has it. He goes back to Corey Russell. Corey Russell puts it up and in. It's 47-43. Pike will on a small run here to get back in the lead. They get it back across court to Boyd, does Pike Central. He brings it across. He throws it off to Sanders. Sanders back to Boyd. Boyd gets it down in the corner. Gillespie for three. No good. And Sean Scott knocks the ball out. Sanders picks it up. He gives it back to Boyd. Boyd has it out at the top of the key. He's going to reset his offense out there. Boyd back at midcourt with it. 440 to play in the ball game. Back out on top it goes to Boyd. Boyd drives, takes it all the way to the basket, lays it up and in. Great drive by Michael Boyd. 47-45, four and a half minutes to play. And Chase Gibson will bring it up for Pike. He walks it across the timeline. He'll be picked up up there by Clevenger. He takes it all the way inside, takes it all the way to the basket, misses the shot, rebound put back up, no good. Fight for the rebound, and Matt Branham comes away with it. He puts the shot back up and in. 49-45, Pike will back up by four. Sean Scott on the other end. He pulls up for 15. It's no good. Rebound comes off back to Pike Central. Clevenger shot up and in. Clevenger puts it in. 49-47. 
357 to play in the ball game, and here comes Chase Gibson, takes it all the way to the basket, lays it up, and he's fouled, and he goes in. And fouled hard is Chase Gibson. And that'll go against Chris Clevenger. That'll be Clevenger's third. Hey, Clevenger fortunate there. He didn't call, get called for intentional. So he just basically flipped him to the floor. <laughs> Hammered him as Coach Dave Thomas wants to call the timeout before the Gibson has the ball. He's going to put it up. The free throw is no good. Rebound comes off to Matt Branham. Branham backs it out, and they'll get it back out to Myers. Pipe will get ready to start trying to put it in the freezer here with a five-point lead or four-point four lead. lead. 3.40 to go. And Branham takes it down inside, gets back over there to Russell. Paul Howard puts up the long three. It's good. 54-57. And Sanders has it. Fox Center gives it back to Boyd. They get it up, try to get it up to Gillespie. Knocked away in there by Corey Russell. And Russell gives it back up to Myers. Myers throws it down court to Howard. Howard fakes the three, gives it back out to Russell. Russell to Gibson. Gibson will put up the three from the top of the key. It's no good. Rebound comes off to Branham. Branham gets it stolen away. Here comes Sean Scott with it. He takes it down the right side, tries to go behind his back. He loses it, gets it up to Sanders, picks it up, and gets it over to Boyd. Boyd tries to take it inside, takes it in, tries to get it into Clevenger. Clevenger has it, puts it up and in. It's 54 to 49, a five-point advantage for Pikeville. And we have a I don't know if we have a timeout or a foul or yeah, what? Had a foul on the play. And the basket is good basket and is one good. shot for Chris Clevens. Yes. That foul against Paul Howard, his third. And that'll send Chris Clevens to the line to shoot one. Shot's good. It's 54-50, a four-point game. And Pike Central will take a full timeout, so we'll take a break and be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. Central High School, only two minutes, 59 seconds to go in the ball game. The Pikeville Panthers leading 54-50 over Pike County Central. And they get it into Chase Gibson, and he'll walk it down court. He'll be picked up there by Sean Scott. Scott tips the ball away, they get it back. Scott takes it toward the basket, goes up over Myers, puts it up and in. It's 54-52, and Pike Central is back in it. They got the deficit down to two. Pikeville throws it away. It'll go back to Pike County Central, and momentum is on the side of the Hawks at this point. As we couldn't even see who threw that one away, the crowd jumped up before me and Ken could, so Pike Central will have it at midcourt. They're trailing by two with 2.40 two to play in the ball game. Boyd has it top of the key, gives it off, down low it goes. Sean Scott puts up the three out of the corner, no good. Rebound comes off to Matt Branham. And Branham has it back in the backcourt. He gives it up to Myers. Myers gives it to Chase Gibson. Gibson will bring it down court. Gibson wants to take it down inside. He gets it back out to Myers. Myers will set up the offense from out there. Corey, Ru or excuse me, Dave Cecil with it at the top of the key. He gives it down over here to Branham. Branham looking inside. And Branham throws it down inside. Howard gets it back out to Branham for three. And it's good. 57-52. Pike will up by five now. Matt Branham steps up big for his team. Boyd gets it down low to Clevenger from 15. No good. Rebound knocked out. Sean Scott gets it, lays it up and in. 57-54, and what a ball game by Sean Scott in this second half. Scott has 11 here in the fourth quarter. Cecil has it, gives it back up to Myers. Myers with it, gives it back to Paul Howard. Back to Myers, back to Howard. Howard gives it up to Cecil at the top of the key. Cecil looking inside and wants it. Ball stolen away by Sean Scott. Boyd picks it up. He gets it back to Scott. Scott spin move, lays it up and in. What a move by oh, Sean Scott. Move. 57 to 56, a minute and a half to play in the ball game. And here comes Pike. Well, back the other way. Chase Gibson has it down in the corner. Back to Adam Myers. Ball knocked away, but it'll go back to Pike. Well, on the tip. A I minute. Pike's ever doing a great job defensively, really going after it. As uh, Pike had six turnovers here in the fourth quarter. Pike Central with only two. 
And and we've got another timeout. Pike is going to call a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. But it's 57-56, the Pikeville Panthers, with one minute, 21 seconds to go in the ball game. And uh, as we said, the primetime players stepping up in primetime as uh, Chase Gibson uh, has 20 points now. He's hit a, hit a big three here earlier in the quarter after Pike Central taking the lead. Uh, Matt Branham just, just nailed a big three there for the Panthers. He's got 15 tonight. But Sean Scott with 12 points at the end of three quarters has stepped up here, and he now has 13 in the fourth quarter alone. So he's got 25, and uh, he can do it in a hurry. And I, he's been involved in these six turnovers. I think he's been involved in, in probably four, creating four of those himself with steals or, or slapping the ball loose from behind. He's just been incredible in this fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, this is prime time. You've got both of them faced up man to man on both ends of the court, and it's been a battle. It certainly has. Gibson to inbound it. Gibson gets it into Myers. They try to get it back to Gibson. It's knocked away. It'll go back to Pike. And once again, Sean Scott on the deflection almost pulled off another steal. And Gibson again will throw it in from out of the baseline. Gibson throws it in again to Howard back out on top of Myers. Myers with it. Gives it over here to Corey Russell. Russell looking inside. Gets it back out on top. Chase Gibson out at the top of the key with it. Gives it up to Matt Branham. Matt Branham gives it back. Gibson at the top of the key again. Gibson with it. Gives it over to Paul Howard on the left. Howard wants to get it back. And <laughs> back to Gibson at the top of the key. Gibson tries to go down low with it. Howard loses it, gives it back out, but oh. Cecil gets it, and Corey Russell gets it and walks with it. And it'll go back to Pike County Central. Only 52 seconds remaining in the ball game. Pike will lead it by one, 57-56. And Sean Scott has the ball. He gives it back to Sanders. Back, Sanders has it again back to Scott. Scott back to Sanders, are getting across. Boyd has it across the timeline. Boyd tries to take it down inside, gets it back out to Scott, and we've got a collision. Scott leaps over everybody, puts it up, and in. there's a blocking foul in there on Matt Branham. 37 seconds to play, and Sean Scott should be at the line. Because that's going to be a bonus situation if nothing else. I believe it'll be a two-shot foul. Scott trying to get the shot off. Matt Branham's third foul. And Sean Scott will go to the line to try to give his Hawks the, the lead here. 37 seconds to play. It's 57-56, Pikeman. Scott eyes the basket, puts up the shot. We're all tied up at 57 with 37.7 seconds. And I tell you, that .7 seconds may be important in this one, Ken. It may be. We're going right to the wire again with these yep. two teams. Sean Scott puts up the second shot. It's in and out, no good. Matt Branham comes away with the rebound. He gives it up to Myers. Myers will walk it down for Pikeville. 30 seconds look for Pikeville maybe to go for a last second shot here. Myers backs out back at midcourt. He gives it up to Cease, I mean to Russell. And we've got a timeout Pikeville with 22 seconds. Let's see, it's going to be a full timeout, so. And uh, we'll just keep it right here. We don't want to make sure we don't miss any of this action. 22.8 seconds to go in the ball game, or in regulation, I should say, and it's all tied up 57-57. So we played, what, almost 24 minutes, and we still haven't decided anything. Almost 32 minutes. 32 minutes, yeah, I can't, and, uh, I can't add too well. That's, uh, <laughs> Quite a night of basketball here as uh, the winner of this game advances to the championship game Thursday night right here at Pike County Central to take on the Shelby Valley Wildcats and the loser will call it a season and uh, both these teams Charlie loaded with seniors nobody wants to go home early here in, in tournament play. You know they both had a taste of it. Pikeville has gone to the regional last I think 10 years in a row. Pike Central this month from Pike Central has been there. Matter of fact they were in the final game against these Pikeville Panthers the year Pikeville won the region. Two years ago. So, you know, both of these teams, they have, they've they had a taste of it, and they want some more. Right. And the Pikeville Panthers will have the ball when we resume play with 22.8 seconds to go, and we're all tied up. And here come the Hawks out. Matt Branham will take the ball out of bounds. 57 all. Pikeville will have the ball with 22.8 seconds to go here. And we're just about ready as we're they're not going to guard the inbounds pass. Branham has it. Or is waiting on it. Now Branham has it. He wants to throw it into Russell. He gets it into Corey Russell back to Branham. 
Out on top, Chase Gibson at the top of the key with it. Guarded there by Scott. He gives it up to Corey Russell. 14 seconds. Russell gives it up to Myers. 10 seconds. Seven. Myers dribbling at it midcourt. Trying to get the pass. Russell looks at it, puts it up. It's a two-pointer. It doesn't matter. And the ball up on the basket. Time runs out. And we're going to OT. As Paul Howard had a follow-up shot right underneath the basket and missed it. Chase Gibson tipped it in, but it was well after the buzzer went off, so we're going to overtime. So we're going to send it back to the station, and we'll be right back with the extra period on your Intermountain Sports Network. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent peace of mind at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. And we're back here at Pike County Central High School where we've been for quite some time as uh, we had a <laughs> long uh, delay, over an hour, I guess, uh, between games here tonight due to the backboard being broken in warm-ups. And now we're going to overtime as Pike Central and Pike Bowl will jump it up. Chris Clevenger against Chase Gibson. We're starting all over, Charlie. Take yep. it away. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, it's been, it had to go this way, Ken, because this ball game is just big for it is the way they play. And we're just about ready. They're getting everybody set around the circle. Here comes the toss. And Pike will again wins the tip. Corey Russell has it. Gives it back to Adam Myers. Myers had it midcourt with it. He brings it down to the top of the key. Takes it down on the right side. Tries to drive. He takes it all the way in. Puts a shot up and he's fouled. I think he was trying to pass. I'm not sure if he's going to shoot or pass the ball. He kind of brought it around in an arc. But he... He's yeah. going to shoot two. The foul goes against Sean Scott. That'll be his fourth. And we were just talking about that. Uh, the foul trouble could be a problem for Pike Central here. First shot up by Myers is good. 58-57. Pike will take the lead in the overtime. And that was a great, great job by Myers driving the baseline. Second one up is also good. Pike will up by two now. 3.47 to play in overtime. They get, try to get the ball in. They get it into Boyd. Boyd gets it back to Sean Scott. Scott takes it into the basket, pulls up from 10. No good. Chase Gibson comes away with the rebound. And we'll go back the other way. He gives it up to Myers. Myers will bring it down across midcourt. Takes it, tries to drive down the lane. He loses the ball, but we've got a, we've got a tripping foul out there. Oh, Jason Gillespie. Good call, but a late call is the only thing I got to say. The, he did he did trip over his foot, but the call, I don't know, maybe couldn't hear the whistle, though. Man, that'll put Myers back at the line for the one and one this time. And Adam Myers is he's a good free throw shooter. He's done well from the line so far. He's, he's two of two tonight. Perfect so far. He puts up the first one. It's good. He'll have one more. Pike will now up by three. 60-57. And Tristan Davis comes back into the ball game. Looks like a prize fighter coming back with the patch over his eye there. And Myers, one more shot. Second one is also good. Pike will now up by four. 61-57. Davis has the ball. Gets it into Boyd. Back to Davis. Davis gives it up to Sean Scott. Scott takes it down. And he kicks it back to Boyd. Boyd will set up his offense there right at the top of the key. He backs up to the midcourt circle now. Throws it down in the corner to Davis. Davis gives it back to Scott. Back out on top to Boyd. Boyd with it. Gets it down in the corner to Davis. He kicks it back out to Sanders. Back over in the corner it comes to Sean Scott. Scott looking inside. Gets it back out to Boyd at the top of the key. Boyd gives it to Sanders. Sanders back to Boyd. Boyd over to Scott. Scott looks at the three. Nothing there. He's back out on top of the boy. Boyd gives it up to Sanders. Sanders back out on top of the boy. Back over here to Sean Scott. 250 to play. Scott fakes the three. Gets it down in the corner to Davis. They get it back out on top of the boy. Boyd goes inside. This time it's Clevenger. Takes it to the basket. Lays it up. No good. Sean. Kristen Davis gets it. Puts it back in for Pike Central. 61 59. Two and a half minutes to play in the overtime. Here comes Corey Russell down with it. He pulls up short. Gives it up to Myers. Good pass as Myers puts it up and in. Easy layup for Adam Myers. 
goal, 63-59. John Scott has it. He gets it to Boyd. Boyd takes it down, gets it up to Davis. Davis goes to the basket with it blocked in there by Gibson. It'll go back to Pikeville. I don't... And yeah. interesting call there. The official on the baseline did not have the position to make the call. Absolutely. Should have been the official out on Absolutely. the floor. And Pike Central will have a couple people checking in, Grigsby and Weddington. Four-point lead for Pike. And we have a five-second call back to... Uh, Pike County Central will have the ball underneath their own basket now, trailing by four, 50, 63 to 59. 219 to play in the overtime. And Davis and Clevenger will check back into the ball game. John Scott to inbound it with 219 to go here in overtime. Gillespie checking back in the game now as Grigsby comes out. Okay. As Trying to decide how we're going to play it, and we're ready to go now. Sean Scott throws it out on top of Boyd. Boyd gets it down in the corner. Davis from about 18. It's good. 63-61 now, two-point ball game, 2.14 to play. And here comes Myers with it for Piper. He brings it across the timeline. He got it out top, gives it off to a long three-point in there by Branham. No good, and a foul back on the other end. This time it'll be on Corey Russell, I believe. And that'll be the third on Russell. And Pike Central will go to the other line, to shoot, other end to shoot one and one from the line. It'll be Michael Boyd at the line. Boyd with a chance to tie it up at two minutes to go in the overtime. Boyd tonight is two of four from the line. And Pike Central doing some offensive, defensive substituting here. Sanders and Gillespie. Grigsby. Grigsby. I knew it began with a G. <laughs> Close enough. Boyd's first shot, no good. Chase Gibson comes away with the rebound, and we got a foul in there on Jason Gillespie. Gillespie's fourth. And that'll send Gibson to the line to shoot two as at the 10th foul. Pike Central now in, put Pike into double bonus. A two-point game as it is right now, 63 to 61. Gibson at the line for two. He takes his eyes the first one, puts it up, and it's going to be short. He'll have one more. And back into the ball game, Clevenger and Davis. Gibson will have one more shot from the line. Exactly two minutes to go here in overtime. And a two-point lead for Pike. Gibson's second shot is good. It's now a three-point ball game, 64-61. Boyd has it. Gives it back up to Scott. Scott back to Boyd. Back to Scott. Scott throws it long to Davis. Davis takes it down inside. Gives it up to Clevenger. Clevenger puts it up, and he's fouled. Chase That'll be Gibson on Chase Gibson. Foul. And let's see. His first yeah, foul Chase of the ball game. First foul. Tremendous job as he was uh, he played great defensively tonight in his first foul of the night. Clevenger at the line. Chance to cut into that three-point lead. He makes the first one. It's 64-62, a two-point advantage now for the Pike Panthers. 149 to play in the overtime. And we've got substitutions again on the defensive end for Pike Central. Clevenger has a second one. It's good. It's a one-point ball game, 64-62. 64-63, excuse me. Yes, yeah, big free throws there by Chris Clevenger. You talk about pressure. Branham has it for Pikeville. He gets it into Cecil. Back to Branham. Branham brings it up the court, brings it across the timeline. Gives it back to Myers. Myers takes it to the top of the key with it. Gives it up over there to Cecil. Back out on top, it goes to Brent Howard. Paul Howard with it. Howard gives it up to Chase Gibson. Gibson at it at the top of the key with it. He gives it up over to Myers. Myers over on the right side. Tries to take it down inside. Goes behind his back. Takes it down into the lane. Kicks it back out. We got a foul. And that's going against number 21, Justin Weddington, his first. So to put Myers on the line 4-2 as they're in the double bonus. 
And 121 to play in the ball game. It's a one point ball game, 64 63. Adam Myers is perfect from the line, isn't he? He's at 4-4 four, four all here in overtime. And he missed it. He'll have one more. 64-63. Again, 121 to play. And Pike Central. And wants a full take timeout. A full timeout. So 121 to go in overtime. It's 64-63 Pikeville on the Intermountain Sports Network. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. North District, first round action. And the Pikeville Panthers leading 64-63 over Pike Central. Adam Myers at the free throw line with one shot remaining. I tell you what a ball game it's been so far. And it's going to go down to the wire in the overtime. Cecil misses the second. Caught for the rebound. Sean Scott comes up with it. It was only him and Cleveland fighting for it. Scott takes it all the way down the floor, loses control, takes it up, puts it up, and he's going to be called for charging. It'll be his fifth personal foul. And Sean Scott has fouled out of the ball game. Uh, Scott a little out of control there. He just, uh, you know, he's determined to take it to the goal and uh, take this lead back, but he uh, just a little too aggressive on that play. And that's got to be a big tough break for Pike Central here. Not only do they not get the basket, but they lose their star player here with 114 to go in the overtime. 64-63, Pike will on top by one. Uh, Sean Scott fouls out with 26 points. Just short of his average as he averaged 26.7 per game on the season. And Denny Grigsby will check in for Sean Scott. Well, Tristan Davis will take a seat. We got a bunch in for Pike Central. And a long down court pass to Gibson. He takes it all the way to the basket, lays it up and in. 66-63 with a minute to play in the, in the overtime. Boyd slowly bringing it up, gives it back to Weddington, back to Boyd, and Pike Central will call a timeout. One minute to play in the ball game. And they still, he first single a full timeout, and I changed it to a 30. We're going to keep it right here, but we've got 102 to go here in overtime. Pike will lead it now by three, 66-63. And uh, somebody's going to have to step up big here for the Hawks, Charlie, yep. for them to pull this out with their star, Sean Scott, on the bench. You know, Pike Central, they had, with Scott in the ballgame, they've got, they still got a real good chance, but now they're going to have to have somebody step up. You know, it's got to be one of the, look for Chris Clevenger or Kristen Davis, one to step up and try to make a big play here. Kristen and Davis, a tremendous outside shooter. He's hit 44% this year from the three point, beyond the three point line. He's a great shooter. Uh, Clevenger, really tough inside to stop. Uh, Michael Boyd, very capable of hitting the three pointer also. So uh, several players out here that could step up for the Hawks, but uh, they're, they're in trouble right now. They throw it by three with only a minute two to go here in overtime. And Gillespie will bring it in bounds for Pike Central. He gets it in the backcourt to Boyd. Boyd will bring it across midcourt, set up his play after he'll be guarded out there by Paul Howard. Boyd out at the top of the key, gets it off. Oh, no, nope. thought he was going to give it off to Glass, but gives it off over here to Sanders. Sanders looking inside with it. Sanders takes it up top of the key, gives it up to Clevenger. Clevenger back to Boyd. Boyd drives down the lane, puts it up. It's up and good. It's 66 65, 38 seconds to play. And Pyle gets it into Gibson. Gibson gives it up to Myers. Myers takes it down court, gives it up to Cecil. Cecil goes all the way in, and he is fouled and fouled hard by Chris Clevenger. Yes, I tell you, when Chris Clevenger commits a foul, he gets his money's worth. That's exactly right. <laughs> As Clevenger's picked up his fourth. 31 seconds to go in the ball game in overtime. Dave Cecil at the line, misses the first one. It's 66-65, 30 seconds, 31 seconds to play. Cecil will have one more. He eyes the basket. He puts up the second. It's good. It's a two-point game, 67-65. 30 seconds. Davis gives it up to Boyd. 
Boyd has it back in the backcourt, gives it up to Gillespie. Gillespie almost loses, gives it across to Sanders. Sanders gets it across the timeline, back up top to Boyd. 22 seconds to play. Boyd out at the top of the key with it, gives it up to Clevenger. Back to Davis. Davis out at the top of the key with it, gives it back up to Boyd. We got 14 seconds. Boyd drives down the lane, and he's going to be fouled. All right. yeah. Paul Howard. Paul Howard on the foul. And it's a shooting foul. So that'll be Howard fourth. That'll send Michael Boyd to the line to shoot two. These are two pressure field free throws for Boyd here. Only 11 seconds remaining here in overtime. 67, 65, Michael up by two. Michael Boyd puts up the first one. It's short. He'll have one more, 11.2 seconds. And substitutions into the ball game for Pike Central. You've got Grigsby and Weddington in, and we have a timeout, Pikeville. A full timeout. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with the final 11 seconds on your Intermount Sports Network. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. The District Tournament with 11.2 seconds remaining in overtime. The Pikeville Panthers leading 67-65 over Pike County Central. The Hawks with Michael Boyd at the line for one more free throw. And... Is Boyd going to try to miss this one intentionally and try to get the rebound, or are they going to try for that one point? Probably a little early for that move. Uh, I'd say he'll try to sink this one, and uh, they'll put pressure on the inbounds pass. If he don't get the steal, they'll have to foul immediately. And Boyd back at the line. 11.2 seconds to go in overtime. Pike pull up by two, 67-65. Michael Boyd has one shot. He eyes the basket, puts it up, second one rolls off, Chase Gibson gets the rebound and he is fouled. And that may be the ball game there as Gibson, an excellent free throw shooter, will go to the other end. Grigsby picked up the foul, his first. Ten seconds to go, Pipe up by two. Gibson tonight, only four of eight from the line. Gibson, a big, big-time free-throw shooter, though. You know, he, does, he does a good job from the line. And he has the ball. He eyes the basket. He puts up the first one. It is in. The three-point ball game, 68-65. Gibson will have one more shot. The one, one, this one could put it away. Yes, it could. Gibson eyes the basket. He puts up the second one. It's good. Pressure free throws as Boyd pushes it up for Pike Central. They've got to get off a quick three here. Boyd kicks it back. Davis puts up the three. It rolls off. Gibson gets the rebound, and it's all over. Pike Boy has won it. 69-65 in overtime. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with some final comments on your Intermountain Sports Network. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you want to do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, Call Cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors, and your community friendly, local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. Won it in overtime, 69 to 65, over a tough Pike Central team, Ken. Mm, yes, it was. Just a tremendous battle. Both teams really fought hard all night, and we saw some big time plays from some big time players here tonight on both teams. We're going to run down the individual stats. First for Pike County Central, they were led by senior Sean Scott 
with 26 points as he had 14 of those in the fourth quarter when he brought his team back to uh, take the lead there at one point. Send the game into overtime. 11 points for Chris Clevenger, 11 for Tristan Davis, 10 for Michael Boyd, and 7 for Jason Gillespie. Pockville led in scoring by Chase Gibson. That's Gibson with 25 points on the night, and he scored five of those in overtime. He had three out of four from the line in overtime when he really needed them. Uh, 15 for Matt Branham as he hit some clutch shots in the second half there. That fourth quarter, he hit a couple of big buckets uh, when Pock Central was making a run. Uh, Adam Myers, another tremendous game for that young man as he had 18 points. He hit uh, six of those in overtime. Uh, two points for Corey Russell, three for Dave Cecil, two for Matt Corbin, and four points for Paul Howard. As the turnover situation, Pikeville committed 19 turnovers. Pike County Central with only 13. But the Pikeville Panthers come away with the victory. And they'll advance to Thursday night's game here, the championship game against the Shelby Valley Wildcats. And, uh, you know, we, we've heard it for years, Charlie. It's hard to beat a team three times in a row in a, in a season. We've seen this happen numerous times in tournaments, not only here in high school, but college basketball also. That uh, A lot of times you'll see a team uh, beat somebody twice during the regular season and then come back and uh, lose to them in the tournament. And uh, I'm sure Coach Rodney Rose is well aware of that, too, as his, his Shelby Valley Wildcats have beat Pottinger twice this year, and they're facing the same thing here Thursday night, trying to make it three in a row. You know, I tell you, a valiant effort by Pike Central as they went down to the wire with Pineville. They had, you know, they took them into overtime. They were down most of the ball game, came back in the fourth quarter on the back of Sean Scott as he really poured it on in the fourth quarter to give them the, get them the lead and give them the chance to go to the overtime period. And you have to think if he, you know, his, his fouling out of the ball game spelled the end for Pike Central there at the end. Yes, it did. As he always steps up in the clutch, makes the big play of what you had done uh, throughout that fourth quarter. And, uh, uh, he goes out of the game. It's a different different team out here without him, but uh, great effort by these Hawks to come back from that deficit in the second half. And what can you say about Chase Gibson, the senior, one of the best players in the region, if not the best. You know, that's an argument we've had all season long. And, you know, he steps up in the clutch, makes those two free throws to ice the ball game and put it away. Right. As he had his last three free throws in the overtime there and a plus a field goal to uh, lead his team to victory. And he did an amazing job tonight on the defensive end and on the boards. Uh, just a great all-round game for Chase Gibson once again, as was as it was for Matt Branham and Adam Myers also. Those three young men, all seniors, and they they really played like, uh, like they've been around a while, which they have. So that'll do it for us here tonight from Pike County Central. We'll be back here Thursday night with the championship games in the both boys and girls. So for Ken Hall, this is Charlie Pinson and Sean Cottle up there. Michael back in the studio saying thank you and good night.